somehow I am somewhere in Essex and the reason why I'm here is purely down to the power of social media. that is actually the date that the kids go back to school um, because obviously we're still living in Covid times. By this date I like to have got all my winter iron treatments all done and with a view to start the, uh, the lawn care season. When I sort of map out my year I generally go third week of March to start all the scarifying and things like that. Um, I'm actually going to bring it slightly forward for some of the scarifying stuff. However, um, when booking in some of the, uh, the iron treatments, I had a few clients who've said, look, yes, we definitely want them done this year, we want to continue with all the services, but could you just hold off until the 8th of March when the kids go back to school? Because I've only got a couple of lawns to do today, what I don't want to be doing is just mixing them all up and then just left with a load of iron, which potentially is going to sit there now until this time next year. So what I will probably do is mere, I don't think I've got any left, in fact now I've got half so that's perfect, yeah I can see it in there now, I've got, yeah I've got one half tank in here so what I'll probably do is just mix up one um, and then what I tend to do is anything that I've got left over gets spread on, gets sprayed on my lawn. So that's the plan for today and then I've got a tidy up job to do for, it'll be the first cut of the year, I don't think there's much grass to be honest, it's more twigs and leaves and things, but also they've had their um, roof jet washed, so there's a lot of just kind of crap just all over the place which needs the blower to, to tidy it all up, so that's the job for today. The one thing I would say is when I'm doing the iron, traditionally I'd always use uh, blue dye just to help me see where I'm going, and I've, I've spoken about that in a lot of my videos and it's probably one of my most frequently asked questions. However, last time I went to Rigby Taylor, I ordered my dye as I normally would. And uh, this kind of, well it had no label on it turned up and I was, it's a totally different bottle. And I said, is that the same stuff as I'd normally use? And they, they ensured me it was, but I can tell you now it isn't. That is a really horrible, thick, um, syrupy type of stuff, which is almost too thick to go through the knapsack sprayer, if I'm completely honest. It's horrible. Um, it's it's even more messier than than the the, the, the usual stuff. So um, yeah, I, I certainly won't be using that again. And this morning's not gone quite to plan. Been sort of a little bit stressful, as stressful as lawn care can be. Where um, what's happening is a lot of the grip from the iron. Although I sieve it through some tights, and I also have another pair of tights which are around the filter on the inside of the sprayer. There seems to be a lot of grit getting through, which means I have to keep stopping and taking the nozzle off, prising that grit out. Uh, so what happens is as it's spraying, it's spraying in different directions and there's gaps in the middle, so I'm not getting a true covering. So all the properties so far today have been like that, so it's taken a lot longer than what it should do. Um, this normally isn't too much of a problem because of the methods I do to stop that grit getting through. So far in the diary, this is my final iron treatment, so it's come kind of at a good time. But uh, what I'll need to do is probably the tights probably disintegrated inside. Um, it's got one of those things to kind of do it, set it up, and then I forget about it. So it might, it just might need a new pair of tights, I guess. But, but I've nearly finished this property, and then and then I'm on to the uh, the bigger, the big winter clear up one from the uh, from the moss and the twigs from the roof being jet washed. So it's Tuesday the 9th of March now and we've got a really nice day and it looks like it's going to be the only nice day of the week actually so what I'm at as a property now is I'm just going to do some aeration and some scarifying the temperatures just aren't quite there in the soil yet for any seeding so I'm just concentrating on 
the uh, the scarifying jobs. It looks so it's going to rain tomorrow. So once I've once I've scarified these lawns and um, and aerated them, I'm then going to feed them as well. So hopefully the the rain tomorrow will water them in. I'll show you what I've done so far. I've basically done all of that lawn. You can see the aerator over there and this lawn here. You can see that the moss is pretty black so it's ready to scarify. Oh it's awful with the sun isn't it? And you can see that the aerator's gone over. Okay, so it might be a little bit easier to see now. Uh, now the sun's kind of gone in a bit, just over halfway through. Scarifier seems to be doing pretty well. Oh. Scrape down there's working. This one's a little bit bent. They're quite they're quite flimsy to be honest. Like that one's not really touching to be honest. Neither's that one. One thing I've noticed so far is hold, it's quite heavy and I'm slightly pushing it uphill. So uh, I've, I've uh, bungee corded the cable shut so I can just move my hands around a little bit. Got a little bit of a blood blister come up, which is weird because I've had gloves on for most of the day. But uh, yeah, progress. Okay, so I've done the front lawn, uh, yet to feed it. Um, now in the back lawn. Uh, this lawn's cut into three thirds basically, they're not equal thirds, but um, I'm just dealing with this first bit. Um, I've already taken the aerator over, this gets really shady in here, so really mossy because of those trees once they've got the leaves on. Obviously this hedge here as well, so this is, this is a moss factory really. Um, so I've taken the aerator over and I'm halfway through scarifying. Time is well, it's ten past seven actually. I've just done my daddy duties and uh, put my little one to bed. So now, um, obviously, I've got to unload the van of all the stuff that is valuable. One of the most important things you need to do with your fertilizer spreader at the end of the day, particularly if you've been using an iron product. And uh, today, I've been using the the nine zero zero with. 11% iron and that is wash it out the iron is massively corrosive at five six hundred pounds that's uh you need it to be lasting a few seasons definitely somehow somehow i am somewhere in essex at ernesto and the reason why i'm here is purely down to the power of social media. Now you may remember if you follow me on Instagram maybe a week ago I put a post up asking about a billy goat blower and if anyone knew if their dealer had one in stock and the important point of it was being in stock. Now I tried buying a billy goat blower last year in November in fact and a couple of dealers said, yeah, 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 we can get you one. One, in fact, took my money. In the end, gave my money back and said, no, we can't get it for you. And I've been on a waiting list for ages. And it turns out I'm only going to get it in June. And I really want it for the scarifying season. So I've been through to a number of dealers. And they've all said the same. I've been in contact many times with Billy Goat themselves. And they've said, you know... There is none coming into the country until June time. 
the only way of getting your hands on one is if a dealer had one in their showroom or in their stock room or wherever that may be. And the only way I was going to find that out was to literally go through the phone book and phone every single dealer in the country until, you know, ticking them off a list until I got through them. And I thought, well, maybe I could just put it out on social media. And if someone happened to be in a dealer's and they happened to notice one, they could, they could let me know. Now, a lot of people messaged me saying, try this dealer, try that dealer. And that was great. But it wasn't really going to help me because I was still going to have to contact them. And then a really nice chap called Crosscut Lawns on Instagram, he messaged me and said, oh, you want to try so-and-so dealer? And, I ex and actually I explained to him that I really wanted to know if someone had one in stock as opposed to me just ringing around as I've, ex as I've explained. And he said, well, I'm going in tomorrow, so I'll, I'll let you know. And then unbelievably, the following day, he said, yeah, They've got ex the model you want, the exact model you want, and actually it was the same price that the dealer who I was had it ordered with um, had it for sale for, and I, f I couldn't believe it. He, he supplied me with the number of the the dealer and the actual mobile of the the guy who was he'd spoken to, and um, so I rang them up, confirmed it, and a few days later I'm now here in Essex picking it up. So it's just a Social media, you know, it has its good points and it had its bad points, but really, I mean, this is amazing and it's all down to social media, so I'm so happy about this. So with all the excitement yesterday of picking up the blower, Overnight, been really windy, a lot of rain has come in. So wind, the wind's always quite difficult when you're doing lawn care and things like that. If it's, so when it's a little bit wet, um, too wet to scarify or too wet to spray, say, selective, what I tend to do is go around all my weed and feed jobs um, and maybe do double the amount, but only do the feeding side of it because it's too wet to spray. And then on a dry day, then what I can do is just go around to all those lawns again and then just do the the spraying part of it on the weeds. It's not ideal, but what it does mean is that you can, you know, you can just get the, the list ticked off a little bit quicker. And uh, it's something that I've done for, for a long time now, and it seems to work quite well. The thing with lawn care is you've just got to work with the conditions you've got, and if it's too wet to do something, then you've, you've got to do something else. Anyway, today it's really windy, so because it's windy, spraying's out of it. And also, when it's like really windy as it has been, then you know feeding is is not ideal either. Particularly the fertilizer that I'm putting down at the moment, it's a real fine prill size, so it's almost dust-like. So any heavy wind, and that's it's going to be gone, and there's going to be mist bits all over the place. So I'm not weeding, feeding, scarifying, or doing anything sort of lawn care related today. But what I do have is a lot of jobs kind of up my sleeve where clients ask me to do them. And I say, look, if you can do them, if you can wait for me to do it when I've got time. Um, and today I'm doing a kind of, to be honest, I'm not really sure what it is. It's something to do with a vegetable patch, either making it bigger or smaller. But as far as I'm aware, it's, it's cutting out some turf and moving that turf to another area. So uh, she's told me about it, but I haven't sort of seen it. I, can't, I kind of can picture where it is. So anyway, we're going to go and do that. Who knows what it is. I've just got a load of tools and we'll hope for the best. But uh, I'll show you that when we're there. And um, hopefully it's going to clear up and be less windy and hopefully less wet tomorrow. So I'm now at the client's property and this is the job. So the client is saying, I don't know what this is, vegetable patch or something. Who knows? But she's basically saying that she can't get anything to grow in this kind of first two foot or so. So what she wants is basically this soil just mounded up there and then this section of turf marked to sort of where I've scuffed a mark there I'll obviously measure it properly um, that turf taken out and lifted into here so that this carries on turf to to roughly there and then this bit here will be vegetable patch or, or flower bed or whatever it is and then this section remaining will should be two passes um, of her hater mower roughly 
so uh, so yeah that's the job and um, well, I'll let you know how I get on so a few hours later the job's all done so I basically cut that turf out from there lifted it over to this side bedded it all in and then just turned that bit over for the the client and uh, her and her gardener or whatever are gonna sort this mound out but uh, what I have done is I have recorded how I did it and I will put that out in a separate video when I get a chance. Good morning. We're now at the start of a really big lawn care job. The soil guy's just uh, rung me. It's ten past eight actually in the morning. So I'm going to meet the soil guy there. And uh, I've got ten cubic metres of soil turning up. Eight of them are going to this job, and then I've got two which are going around the corner for uh, for Monday's job. Now, I got that a dirt I'm not trying to grab the <laughs> Up here, Dave. Yeah. Two We've got a big old job on today, about 1,500 square meters of complete lawn maintenance. We've got Ross over there, he's just blowing off the dew on an area that's been cut. We've got the guy, uh, I guess the handyman around here, he's gone ahead, he's striping the lawns, they're not my stripes. So he's just uh, cutting the grass a little bit. And you can see where I've come in and done the iron treatments. And he's working his way all the way out to roughly from where we are to the trees here. This is the bit we're doing today. So we're going to be scarifying, aerating, overseeding, fertilizing and then top dressing. So I've got eight bags of uh, top dressing. Uh, this is pretty good stuff. This is spooners. Um, very sandy soil which is great for dressing. This is brilliant stuff. And that's my new go-to person, spooners. Um, earth cycle. Earth cycle that you know I've used in the past. They just won't deliver to me anymore. Um, I, I, I'm out their way apparently. I used to be in their way. Does that even make sense? So, so yeah, we're going to start over there, work onto this bit, and then uh, Serge, I think his name is, is going to get the big tractor out and do the rest of that section there. So we've got that area which is half through, halfway through scarifying, loads coming off. Uh, Ross is just about to start hollow tining this lawn, and then we've got our friend Serge over there. Um, <laughs> cutting the grass um, over there so uh, hopefully the rain will hold off the sun seems to be coming through now so that's good mate we made a start and it had an absolute downpour for a good half an hour which has made the, the clear up take a hell of a lot longer the plan today was to get it all scarified and aerated but uh it's taking a lot longer. It doesn't look like it's due to rain now until, well I don't know, but certainly for the rest of the day and tomorrow it's going to look dry. So I think what we're going to do is rather than persevering with trying to clear all this up and just making a mess, we're going to get this all done and then we're going to overseed, fertilise and dress out these areas here. And then if we've got time we might start as like a an, an individual square section right over there. So we will uh, maybe attack that bit. But actually I think what we're going to do is leave the scarifying until tomorrow. So tomorrow we've only got that section to do the whole work to. Also what I've done is I've scheduled in a lot of work around this property for next week too. So if I do have to come back 
um, on Monday, say, to finish off, it's not the end of the world because I'll only be working just around the corner. That's the thing when you work outside, you have to work with the weather. You may have your best laid plans, but sometimes you've got to be willing to, to change them slightly. To, to make the decision to to just get all this stuff done. Uh, our man Serge here has decided to stay on and help us, which is fantastic. So we've got him on the barrow, uh, Ross is spreading it, and then I've just finished pre-seeding and seeding just ahead of them. So now I've done that, I'm gonna help out with the, with the rest of the top dressing. Uh, you probably can't see it, but over by the wheelbarrow is the drag mat. So Ross is pretty good with the drag mat, so I'm sure he'll come in and get involved in that. And then once we've got this area all done, We'll probably uh, maybe do the, the section just over there um, and then save this big area for uh, the rest of these bags here. Morning, day two on this job and the weather has not been kind. Uh, today's supposed to be dry, but it's uh, it's rained all night and all morning, so uh, we're really sort of struggling to work out exactly what we're going to do. So the rain the rain has come down and it's been okay in the sense that it's washed in uh, what we top dressed yesterday, so that's great. Uh, the the problem we have is it's supposed to be dry for the rest of the day, but it's really really windy. So that is going to make clearing up the scarifying an absolute nightmare. So what we're going to do is we're just going to, to make the clear up a lot easier is we've got Ross on the, on the aerator there. We're going to just do the cores and hopefully this wind will pass through. If it hasn't, then we might knock it on the head for the day and then just have to come back next week. If, it, if the wind does die down, then we'll start scarifying um, once this is all done. It's not ideal, but we're just, you know, trying to make the best of it. And as I said, I've said already, you know, you've got to work with the weather. And if the weather isn't with you, you've got to change the plan or, or wait for another day. Seven Saturday night. Um, just don't, actually, I'm just unloading the van. As you can see, just getting the uh, scarifier and the aerator off. Uh, have to stop off. Get a Mother's Day present now. I think that is the duty that falls to a, a father on on such a day. So uh, we got hit with every kind of weather today. The wind was pretty strong the whole the whole day through, but actually, to be fair, the, the wind was was in our favour. It was pushing all the debris where we wanted it to go. So, in, in a way, it kind of made it easy. Although the rain we had overnight made everything take a lot longer, um, and then everything was looking good. And for a few hours there, it was it was brilliant. It was a really good day's work, and then. All of a sudden, hail, then we had a downpour, and then we had hail that hurt. So, you know, we had to go and take a run for cover. So, um, anyway, back on Monday, which was always the... In an ideal world, if everything had gone perfectly, we probably could have done a long day today and got it all done. Um, but tomorrow... Uh, Monday have to go back and just finish off some of the top dressing so that's fine um, and that was expected you know it's been it's been pretty challenging with the weather for the two for the two days but I guess that that is the issue with lawn care if it is going to be more than just you know it's easy if you've got a little 200 300 square meter lawn you can smash everything out everything out in a couple hours so all you need is a dry morning or afternoon to get everything done when you're doing, a, you know, multiple full days of, of lawn care just at one property, you kind of, a, you know, the, the minute you've started, you've kind of committed. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. That is the lawn care lifestyle, which uh, you hear people talking about. So 
I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Hopefully I've had a haircut by then, this is getting ridiculous.